All right, everybody, Zach Ullman, and today I have something that is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm creating that finances fun, and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm working on my book, Learning Grow Rich, and one of those ideas inside of the book is that the gold standard doesn't matter. And for some of you, you're already upset by just me saying that. For And so I want to have a conversation. And so what I'm asking you to do is take off your opinionated hat and just listen to what I have to say. And guess what? I might be wrong. And so if I'm wrong, this is what I'm willing to, this is what I'm willing to say to people, right? You're giving me your time, which is valuable. And if I'm wrong, what I say is I'll pay you, right? And so for anybody that can find, like, now you got to prove it. You can't just give me some opinion, is I will pay you. And that price is going to go up the more and more uh, that people go out there and, um, uh, you know, listen to this. And so wherever you listen to this, check out the text behind this. I'm starting at $100, right? And so if somebody can prove me wrong and uh, show me the, the proof of it, just like math, right? Whenever you say one plus one equals two, you have to mathematically prove that. I'm going to mathematically conceptually prove this to you today. And I might be wrong. And I fully, <laughs> I fully admit I might be wrong, but what a fun conversation, right? What a fun conversation because right now in the world, there's this, uh, you know, currency devaluation. There's the dollar, uh, people are getting off the dollar onto the gold standard. And my opinion is it doesn't matter. And here, I'm going to show you why. And so first off, we have to understand, we have to, we have to compare and contrast some things, right? And so there's a gold value with a pegged value, I'm sorry, gold standard with a pegged value. And then there's a gold standard with a floating value. And so we have to understand the difference between those because the, the idea behind the gold standard is there's always a tangible uh, a piece of gold to back every dollar, okay? And so, uh, Let's go. We're jumping right into this game because I've been I've been putting my thoughts together. I've been debating with my friends and what a fun conversation. And so don't let, let, let's not have this conversation as I'm right and you're wrong or I'm wrong and you're right. Let's have a conversation about, well, what if, right? What if? Because there is an answer and I think I found it and I want to make sure before I put it in the book that it's absolutely we've looked at it from all angles so i appreciate your time i value your time and i'm just looking to have some great conversations with some great thinkers some great economists some great finance people and some just people that want to learn and so that's what this conversation is and so let's have some fun with some finance here and so first off we have to look at the concept of gold standard peg value pegged value and so what that means in the context of finance is one ounce of gold equals one dollar. Let, let, let's let's increase that. One ounce of gold equals a thousand dollars, right? So if we say per ounce equals a thousand dollars, if you're watching me here, you're seeing I have this beautiful diagram that I created, and if you're not, if you can't see it, uh, you know, uh, just what I what I have is I have some columns here, and I'm showing some houses, and so just follow with me, and you can uh, watch this on YouTube or something somewhere else. So we have price per ounce is a thousand dollars, and so if we have two homes, and they're both worth a thousand dollars, right? We have two thousand dollars worth of value. And what I'm trying to prove here is I want to bring you along with me is value is real, money is made up. Again. Value is real, money is made up. At one point, there was no such thing as money. Believe it or not, go research the history of money. Money is a social construct, meaning it was made up by humans. Value has always been there, right? So we have to understand those two, the differentiation between those two things, right? And so uh, we have hard asset value. We're gonna put it $2,000. And again, if you guys see something I'm missing here, let me know because I wanna make sure that this is, this is perfect for the book. So, uh, you know, help me. I'm, I'm, I'm open to any feedback on this. And so now here's the thing. We have non-hard asset value. So let's, let's, that's like, uh, that's like video games. That's, that's like intangible assets. There, it could be so many different things. And so I'm just going to say, you know, we, I have two items here. Let's say we have some groceries and some, a bicycle, and let's say they're valued at $300 total, right? $150 a piece. And so our total money supply would be the $2,000 in hard assets, 
plus the $300 in non-hard assets. So we have $2,300 of money in this finite economy. And so we have to think of it as singular like this, because as if we think of it as a national economy, as a local economy, anything like that, there's just so many variables. And so to prove the concept, we have to narrow it down into something this simplistic. And so now this is pegged to value, meaning one ounce of gold equals a thousand dollars. And so what happens as the economy expands, right? So now we're now we're in growth mode. So the economy is going to expand. Now we went from two houses to four houses, right? And so if we have a pegged value, right, and a finite amount of gold, that's always the the you know even with crypto, people are like, well, there's a finite amount of it. Well, my argument is there's a finite amount of gravel. There's really a finite amount of anything, right? And so if we hold that context or that, that principle that there's a finite amount in this closed example, there are two ounces of gold, right? Let's just say that's all the demand out there in the world or all the supply out there in the world, but we just doubled supply. So we just went from two houses to four houses but we only got two ounces of gold and that gold is only worth a thousand. And so, right, the, it, we can't change it because it's pegged, right? And so we have the floating one next, we're gonna go to that. And so the value, right, is what's the value? This is where you gotta put on your critical thinking hat, right? I told you we're gonna be thinking here. Money supply is still 2000 because we didn't wanna print anymore, right? We said this is a pegged and, and gold is a finite, resource assume we have, we found all of it right and so uh, because if 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 we didn't right then it wouldn't be finite and so our hard asset value well it has to be 2000 right it has to be because that's that's all the money out there i'm sorry uh, we only have two, uh uh um i'm sorry um let me back up here. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. And so uh let, let's talk about non-hard asset value. What that's a question mark right? And so the thing that we do know is that there is $2,300 in the money supply and the hard asset value, uh, we don't know. And so we don't know value of anything yet. We know the price per ounce and there's two ounces uh, out there and we got some money supply of 2,300 bucks and maybe there's 2.3 ounces because of the, the non-hard assets. But what's the value of these things, right? What is the value? of these things? That's the question because we just doubled the supply. And so the, we, and this is my, this is the reason I'm saying the gold standard, one of the many reasons that saying the gold standard doesn't work because as supply increases, value does not decrease necessarily. And so if we, if we use this in a finite system, we're saying that these houses went from a thousand dollars a piece to five hundred dollars a piece because we doubled it. We maintained the money supply the same. We kept the money supply the same, but we doubled the asset value. We doubled the homes, and so, so theoretically, in this they would be worth five hundred, and we know that that's not true, right? Uh, the non-hard assets. What would happen here? Well, we went from one hundred fifty dollars a piece to now 75 because the money supply has to say the same that's that's the argument right well we can't print money because that increases inflation and that devalues our currency and that does this and that does that i'm saying that is not necessarily true i'm saying value is different in money and as the economy expands so does value value is expanding and so what is the value of a home if there's only 2300 dollars of cash available if the money supply is only 2300 what is the value of the hard assets what is the value of the non-hard assets what is the total value of everything out there in my first example i gotta i gotta make a correction here it's really 2300 right money supply equals value in the first uh, example right and the second example money supply does not equal value all right so now we have to go to this um we have to go to uh, this gold standard floating value. And so we're going to start off with the same thing, $1,000 per ounce, two homes, right? 
So two homes uh, and, and two, um, so we're gonna have $1,000 here, $1,000 for this house. So each house is worth $1,000. Each non-hard asset, the groceries and the bicycle is worth 150, same starting point. So we have $300 here. Um, non-hard asset value is 2,000. Money supply is 2,300, right? Because we're in a closed vacuum here. Value is 2,300. Same exact thing as I started with over here, you can see, right? Same exact thing. Um, and so now this is where it's different. This is where I see that the floating value is the reality of it. And all the gold people out there, you would too, because gold increases in value, right? Gold, now this is getting fun. Keep your, keep your critical thinking hat on. And so in a floating value, if we keep prices the same, the houses will be worth $1,000 each. So now we have $4,000 in home value, right? We have $4,000 in home value and we have $600 in non-hard assets, groceries and a uh, bicycle, right? And so the total value, right, is one, two, three, four, forty six hundred dollars right, $4,600. Uh, the money supply is $4,600. The hard asset is $4,600. Oh, I'm sorry, is uh, 4,000, right? 4,000. And the non-hard asset is 600, right? And our price per ounce, well, our price per ounce went up to uh, $2,300 per ounce, right? I got to fix my first example. It's actually a buck fifty uh, an ounce over here, a thousand um, one fifty, because we I forgot the the hard assets. Um, so our price per ounce doubled, right? Because it was at eleven fifty in the in the in the uh, uh, in the peg value and it doubles to 2300 because uh, supply doubled supply of hard supply of assets out in the world doubled okay now that would if you're if you buy gold on this open market you want the price of gold to go up right and so you are operating under the assumption that um it's a floating value because it's tradable on the open market. Now here's here's a brain twister for you. Every time gold goes up in value, it is worth more dollars, which means more dollars is in supply in the economy, which means your value, your dollars are worth less in theory, but it really isn't because of so many other factors. So I want you to think about that. For all you gold people out there, right? If gold is worth, right? One ounce of gold is equal to $1,000. Um, right, to, right, you want over time for that gold to go up in value. So you want eventually one ounce of gold to be equal to, I'm just gonna use $1,500. Well, what did that do? That increased the money supply because we only have two ounces of gold in this, in this, in this um, closed caption or I mean, in this example. And so we went from, $2,000 worth of real dollars to $3,000 worth of dollars. It was backed by the same ounce of gold. And that's why I'm saying it doesn't matter about the gold standard because the price of one ounce can go to infinity. Think about that. They can print as much money as they want on one ounce of gold, unless it's a pegged system. And if it's a pegged system, you can't expand economies because there's a finite amount of gold. And so there's two ounces of gold, it's only worth $2,000. And so the economy can't get past $2,000 worth of value. When people are born, guess what? Value is created, they need more houses, more houses are created, more food needs to be created, video games need to be created. Um, Cell phones need to be created. Those are value that need to be paid for by dollars. 
And so the only way to have that extra value be accounted for is to increase the money supply. How do you increase the money supply? Well, if you have a pegged system, you go and find more gold, which is finite. Eventually, you're going to run out unless you have to readjust this. Now, this is exactly what happened with the history of money. If you really go research this, this is how kingdoms went. Uh, they used to have a pegged uh, operating system for currencies. And the their kingdoms couldn't expand. So this is what they do. They said, we're going to revalue the gold. We're going to revalue it from 500 to 1,000. We're going to revalue it from 1,000 to 2,000. We're going to print money. And so what happens is the dollar value per ounce increases. And if you need more money, that number can go to infinity, which essentially means, right, it doesn't matter. And so that's my argument for this. And so if we look at, now we got to look at fiat currency, backed by good faith, right? Backed by good faith over here. And so, Right, we have. We're going to start off with the same. We're going to have a thousand dollars per home. This is fun. So I'm flushing out my thinking on this. So uh, let me know if you see something for real. I love this. This is so fun, right? This is this is what I, this is what I do for fun. Is I think about finance and money and business. And so here, our price per goal, uh, per ounce is a thousand dollars. Our value is uh, twenty three hundred. Our money supply is twenty three hundred. Our hard asset value is 2,000. Our non-hard asset value is 300. Same, everyone starts at the same place. And so as economy expands, right? We're gonna use the same thing. What on average is gonna happen? Let's say now each house, we went from two houses to four houses, they're going to expand, right? So now each house is worth $1,000. So, right, there's $1,000. Each bicycle and stack of groceries is going to be worth $150. Now, for you economists out there, you can say, well, that doesn't necessarily matter. But I want you guys to understand the theory because I would agree with you. And so hard asset value is $4,000. Non-hard asset is $600. Money supply is $4,600. Value. Well, if we're going to say 4,600, you know, that's, that's argumentative because value does not equal money, right? And so our price per ounce is $2,300. So my question to you is which one does the fiat currency represent? Does it represent the gold standard peg value or the gold standard floating value? The logic is the same as the gold standard floating value. So why do we need to spend all of this time, money, and energy digging up gold to be backed by it because the value of the gold is only because we said it has value, just like fiat currency. I, and I know some of you guys are gonna be like, what is he talking about? Is he crazy, right? The value of anything, this is, right, is what we say it's worth. The value of, he, here's the thing, the value of the dollar, if the dollar didn't exist, gold wouldn't have value. It would just be a piece of gold. If now this, I'm getting ready to do another blog uh, podcast on this. If the dollar goes away, crypto goes away because the dollar value of each crypto is worth a dollar value. If the dollar goes away, one crypto equals one crypto. And if there's a finite amount of crypto, then what? And so I want you guys to do this thinking, do the thinking. And so we need the money, uh, money supply to expand. And so the reason we're in the predicaments that we're in today has some, yes, yeah, some stuff to do with printing money, but it has so much more to do with the principles of finance and the mismanagement of debt and the mismanagement of a lot of other things. And so this is a piece of it, but I see so many people out there saying, oh, we're in this predicament because we're not in the gold standard. Now, I am here to fully admit I might be wrong. And so if I'm wrong, prove it to me. Like, let's have a conversation. Uh, go find this, this, this little spreadsheet. I have this little document I have and prove the theory, uh, prove, the, prove the economic theory, prove the mathematical theory 
And let's have a conversation because the world needs to know the right way about this. And there's so much misinformation about money out there. There's so much misinformation about economics out there. There's so much inf uh, misinformation about finance. And I've been studying finance for the last few decades. I'm a published author in it. I live and breathe it. And this is how I had to prove to myself because I was freaking out. I was like, what's going to happen to the world? And I was like, oh, let me just logically think about this. And so if you have a different point of view, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. And if you can prove me wrong, I'll pay you, right? I'll pay you. And so that here's, the, here's the rules of the game. You have to prove it to me, right? You have to prove it to me, not just opinion, give me your opinion. Because trust me, I've gone rounds with great debaters, great economists on this, and they, they see it my way after, you know, some long debates. And I, I, I'm not saying I know everyone out there and I know everything out there, but I'm saying I want to start that conversation so we can get people the right information and they can start understanding money and how to manage it and how to grow it and how to build true wealth. And so my name is Zach Ullman. I hope I challenge you today and I want you to do the thinking, right? Consider value is not equal to money. Money is made up by humans value is real right value is real how do i know that and i'll prove it to you right now can i trade one house for a car yes i could trade a house for a car i traded value i didn't need money to do it and so the reason money was exist uh, uh, created is because there always wasn't an equal exchange of value and so if the home was valued at 100,000, but the car was valued at 80,000, well, they needed to bridge the gap of value. And they said, hey, let's convert value into dollars, and then we can exchange dollars, and then you can go exchange that dollar for milk and, and uh, vacation and whatever. And so money is a store of value. And that store of value is only there because of trust and integrity and the good faith of the person writing the IOU. I don't care what it's backed by, right? And so we're gonna we're gonna continue these conversations. I got a bunch more about you know uh, the crypto markets. I got a bunch more uh, information coming down about you know the the global uh, crypto dollar that's going to do away with all dollars. I'm here to say to you it it can't happen. From a from a theoretical standpoint, you can't. And I and I'm fully here to say I might be wrong. <laughs> but let's have this conversation, gang. Thanks for tuning in. I hope I uh, I got your brain thinking and keep listening. We got content like this coming out. Uh, I love finance. I love thinking about stuff like this. I love growing businesses, and most importantly, I love helping other people do it. And so, if you want to learn more about us, check out my blog page, IndianaOlman.com. We got. Um, this whole concept of learn and grow rich. We have learn and grow rich business. We have learn and grow rich real estate. We have learn and grow rich trouble, couples, travels, all that whole, the whole scope of what I spent the last two decades of my life creating. My wife and I travel the world. We help people and we make money doing everything we do. And that's because this is our passion. Right? We want to make a difference in the world, and we realize you need to make money to do that. So that way, we don't have to ask for handouts. We don't have to ask people for money. We write the checks ourselves to fund the projects and the passions, the passion projects that we think matter. So keep tuning in, keep listening. I really value your time, and so I'd love to hear.